What's up guys, it's Woof Woof Wolf. Welcome back to a brand new series called Mandalorian of the Week. I'll be covering some of the most badass Mandalorians in all of Star Wars. Your Mandalorian of the Week is Pre Vizsla. For generations, my ancestors fought proudly as warriors against the Jedi. Now, that woman tarnishes the very name Mandalorian. This lightsaber was stolen from your Jedi temple by my ancestors during the fall of the Old Republic. Since then, many Jedi have died upon its blade. Prepare yourself to join them. Formerly the governor of Concordia, Pre Vizsla was a Mandalorian warrior who was the leader of the terrorist organization known as the Death Watch. His goal throughout the Clone Wars was to restore the warrior heritage of his homeworld Mandalore by effectively ending Duchess Satine Kreese's pacifist regime. As a Mandalorian warrior, Vizsla had advanced training in many forms of combat, from ranged weaponry to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Vizsla was also a highly capable marksman, even able to shoot the lightsaber out of Maul's hand in their bow. In addition to his unarmed and ranged abilities, Vizsla had at least some degree of training with the Darksaber and was skilled enough to keep even a Jedi at bay. Vizsla wore the traditional and resilient combat armor of the Mandalorian warriors. This armor was equipped with dual antennas, a jetpack variant, magnetized boots, and a pair of Mandalorian van braces. These were equipped with paired blaster barrels, a flamethrower, a whipcord thrower, and a launcher that fired disc-shaped buzz saws. In addition to his armor, Vizsla wielded a pair of Westar 35 blaster pistols and the Darksaber a legendary lightsaber created by his ancestor, Tar Vizsla, that had been used by his clan and house to rule all of Mandalore long ago. Vizsla conspired with Mandalorian Senator Tal Merrick to capture Kreese during her journey to Coruscant, where she intended to plead her case directly to the Galactic Senate. But Merrick was defeated before he could complete his assignment. Amassing an army of Death Watch troops on Concordia in preparation to take over Mandalore, Vizsla was forced to wait until his and Dooku's plot to turn Mandalore against the Republic was completed. Vizsla dispatched an assassin to Coruscant to kill Kreese, as her death would remove the opposition to the Senate's upcoming vote to have the Republic troops occupy Mandalore. However, the assassin failed to murder Kreese, and the plot itself fell through, with the Senate voting against occupying Mandalore. With this turn of events, Vizsla was forced to postpone his attack on Mandalore, as his forces would be unable to hold the planet without its people's support. Under Vizsla, the Death Watch maintained a small base on the world of Karlak, but the once strictly regulated army became merely a group of ruthless outlaws, where they committed dishonorable acts against the native populace, the Ming Po, forcing their women to work for them. Eventually, Lux Bonteri, in an attempt to take revenge against Count Dooku for the death of his mother, Mina Bonteri, had allied himself with Pre Vizsla, and he was used to try to find and kill Count Dooku, but failed. Pre Vizsla was then confronted by the Ming Po elders, who had demanded the return of their women. At first they complied, but Lux was shown their true colors as they began to burn down the Ming Po village. However, Ahsoka Tano revealed herself as a Jedi, taking out several Death Watch members before being subdued. Upon return to the Death Watch camp, Vizsla expressed his disappointment in Bonteri for bringing a Jedi. Despite Bonteri convincing him to spare her, Vizsla was adamant to execute her. Before Vizsla could kill Ahsoka, R2-D2 entered the hut, created a distraction, and armed Tano with her lightsabers. After freeing herself and decapitating four Death Watch soldiers, she then dueled Vizsla for a time and caused Vizsla's jetpack to explode, where she and Bonteri escaped. Following the events on Karlak, Vizsla and the Death Watch established a camp on the Swamp Moon Zanbar. Later, Vizsla and his soldiers came across an escape pod lost in deep space, which held the stranded former Sith Lord Maul and his brother Savage Opress. Harboring a common hatred of Obi-Wan Kenobi, they planned on having their revenge after their planned conquest of Mandalore, gathering an army of criminals including the Huts, the Pikes, and the Black Sun. The criminal alliance attacked the capital, allowing Death Watch to act as heroes to a desperate population after the Duchess's forces failed to stop the criminals. With the support of the Mandalorian people, Vizsla ousted Satine and appointed himself Prime Minister, also assuming the title of Mandalore. He also betrayed his Sith allies, who were imprisoned, but managed to escape. Maul challenged Vizsla to a duel to determine the true ruler of the Mandalorians. After a long and difficult duel, Maul defeated Vizsla and publicly beheaded him in front of the Death Watch, before claiming his position as leader of the Death Watch. But because Maul was not a Mandalorian, Bo-Katan Kreese and the Night Owls refused to follow him, and would eventually ignite another Mandalorian civil war. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and stay tuned for the next one. Let me know in the comments below who you want to see next. This is Woof Woof Wolf, signing off, and as always, Woof Woof.